Let's have a look at a sample project in Microsoft Project 2013. This sample project is available in your working folder. And as you can see, it appears to be a variety of tasks to do with building a new bathroom. Now the makeup of the layout is this whole left hand side here with the columns, very much like Excel. The task information, let's move this vertical line. You can grab and just move that yourself. And on this left hand side, we see a number of set columns, an information column. Nothing you can do directly can allow you to type in this column, but things you may carry out can cause little symbols to appear there. Then we have the task mode. Now there are two task modes essentially in the project. There are manually scheduled tasks and automatically scheduled tasks. With a manually scheduled task, the task starts and ends when you tell it to. With an automatically scheduled task, then the task will move dependent on its relationship to other tasks. Now, obviously, we explore relationships in much more detail and how they can be affected. Then we have the task name. Now, in the task name column, we also see some task headings. So you can see here, this heading here is in bold and it has a little triangle next to it that will allow you to effectively compress the planning phase section. So when I compress that, it contracts and the triangle changes into a little white triangle and then you can click it to expand. Now further down, we actually have some subheadings inside subsections. So the first phase electrical, for example, is indented. That gives you the indication that it is actually a subsection and it too can be contracted like so. As with the first phase plumbing, both these are subsections of the first phase building that we can contract and that contracts that whole section. And then again, we can expand out. Now you can see, just like Excel, we have numbers down the left-hand side. Now the numbers stay the same. We can't actually delete any of those rows. If we do delete a row of contents, everything just moves up and effectively gets renumbered. So when you hide a section, like the first face plumbing, there are a number of rows missing. So you've got two indications that there is something not all there. One is the white triangle to indicate that first face plumbing can be expanded and the fact that rows 23 to 26 are not visible. Expanding out, those row numbers appear and the triangle becomes a black triangle. Also in this left-hand column table layout, we see the duration, and that's listed in days. So the duration of each task, one day, two days, zero days, where you have a heading that is then not totaled up, although that does appear to total up to three and a half days. It's the duration of that phase. Because these tasks run consecutively, it is the duration of the planning phase. But when it comes to the preparation phase, we have two days, two half days, two hours, and one hour. Well, they don't add up to 2.75 days because some of these sections happen at the same time. So the total duration for the preparation phase is 2.75. That's not the total of each of the tasks within it. We then see a start date. We then see a finish date for each task and therefore for each phase. There is then a column headed up predecessors. Now, just like Excel, these columns will widen if you can't see the whole heading or even the whole contents. Perhaps you've got a long task name. None of ours are, but they could be, and you could just widen the column at the top here. So between one column and the next, you get the option to widen. Now, the predecessor contains some numbers. Those numbers are the task ID for the predecessor. So here I can see three, which refers to row three here. Here I can see eight, that refers to eight here. If I happen to delete a row, therefore a task, the renumbering will happen automatically and it will still be linked to the correct predecessor. I just widen slightly because I've widened the predecessor's column. The resource name column shows the resources that are attached to a particular task. Now in this example, we have no resources attached, which is lucky, so we don't actually need to see that column. On the right of the table is the Gantt chart, G-A-N-T-T, Gantt chart. Currently displaying in a weekly layout format, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Saturday and Sunday are grey because they're classed as non-working days. Obviously you can change that if you do work Saturdays and Sundays. This dotted vertical line is the project start date, so the project doesn't start until that point, and then all my tasks appear as little blue bars which indicate relatively the length of that particular task. This one here looks like it lasts about three days. When I hover, it actually says two days. 
It's halfway through Wednesday to halfway through Friday. This one here goes over the weekend, so appears to last longer than it actually is because it's a two day task, but you can't do any work at the weekend, so it has to stretch into Tuesday. There are much shorter tasks in here as well. And then the little diamond here is a milestone. So it's a little marker to say at this point we want to measure something. And you can see over here it has a name, preparation complete. This one's planning complete. I can spot the milestones in the Gantt chart because they are dark grey diamonds. And in the table they are down zero days in their duration. Now these tasks are all linked to each other in a variety of ways and we'll see how those links work and the different types of links. But in the Gantt chart on the right we can change the time area. At the moment we're looking at about a week at a time. If I move this vertical bar to the left because we're interested in the Gantt chart now I can actually zoom in and out using the control key and the wheel on the mouse is the easiest way. You can see as I zoom in I can see more and more close in and a breakdown. I can see here Tuesday the 1st of January 8 o'clock and each 15 minute interval there. 9 o'clock and each 15 minute interval there. So I'm really close into this project which means the bars really stretch out for a long time. Notice also that being this close in I can see between 12 and 1 is also a grey bar as that is lunchtime, non-working time. Now if I control and zoom the other way. I get back to my week view, but I can zoom right out the other way. And you can see I can now see quarters, quarter one, 2013, quarter two, 2013. And I can even come down to half years. So there's the first half and there's the second half of this year. And out again, be H1 and H2. And that's as effectively as far away as I can zoom. So very useful for long term projects. Town planning is one example. Now, if you do a lot of zooming in and zooming out, you'll tend to find that your tasks disappear off the timeline. Now, we can bring them back to view very quickly by selecting a task and choosing the scroll to task option here on the task ribbon. One click brings that particular task into view, and then I can continue zooming in or out depending on which way I want to go. Let's go back to the week view. So, the right hand side chart is the Gantt chart. And that effectively shows you a graphical representation in a timeline format for your tasks that are created, added and managed in the left hand side here. Very much like Excel layout. Now the two work hand in hand. We can make some changes in here and those changes will be reflected in here. Or we can make the changes in here and the change will be reflected on the Gantt chart. So this has just been a sample project just to see where we're heading, where we're hoping to get to as we work through and build up our skills and knowledge of Microsoft Project 2013.